here's one I prepared earlier on the screen. So what I've done is I've gone from that parabola we got in the middle. That's the derivative. Uh, and it is, by the way, to introduce some language which we'll only really need to worry about later. You differentiate it once, so we call that the first derivative. This guy down the bottom, you differentiate a second time, so we call it the, not the first derivative, but the sec I know, amazing, right? The second derivative, very creative name. Now have a look, right? The first thing is I've got a straight line. Why should that make sense with the intuition we had before? Yeah. Ah, very good. So when you look and see there's only one stationary point, just one, you should expect only a single place where you've got a gradient of zero. Okay? The other thing is, just very roughly speaking, the very first graph we started with was probably a cubic, right? Probably. The next one was a... After cubic, what do we call it? When there's a power 3, the next one's power 2. What do we call that? A so we call the shape a parabola, but we call the equation a quadratic, right? Cubic, quadratic, what's next? Linear. Just linear, a straight line, right? Which is exactly what we got, okay? Now, when you have a look at this guy, you gotta think a little more carefully because what I'm giving you now, this is the middle graph, right? This is the gradient. Now I want you to try and work out what would the original function, the function where we started from, um, you can call this the antiderivative, right? Where did you come from, right? I want you to have a think. I'll give you the first clue, but it's, it's not a huge clue. Um, the first clue is, do you remember when we were doing this together, from the original graph down to the gradient, we looked for stationary points, right? Do you remember that? Okay. Here's my clue for this one. I'm not drawing lines down, I'm drawing them up. I'm going to let you see if you can work out, just from that as a bit of a nudge, drawing those lines from the gradient function, where it's zero, and drawing them up. What might you expect to get on the top? Have a go, use pencil, get it wrong, try something out, compare with the people next to you. Okay guys, let's have a look together because this is trickier. In fact, um, some of you may not have realized this but you're actually learning something uh, sort of visually now which you're not gonna learn for a good like six months algebra. You're like, really? That advanced? Okay, that's why it's a bit hard, right? Let me show you, let me walk you through how I'm going to think through this. For starters, um, I started you off looking at the graph above, but maybe it might be easier if we actually did the one below. We know how to do that. We know how to differentiate, right? This looks roughly like what kind of shape? It looks like a parabola, right? So an x squared something or other. So therefore you should expect, anticipate that the graph below should be what kind of shape? Linear, straight line, very good. Hopefully you've worked out by now, I'll keep on that one. When you go from that stationary point down to here, you're going to have a positive gradient over there, it's increasing, and then it turns to zero, and then it gives way to a negative gradient, see that? Right? So that's why you should have, sorry I'll choose a darker color, you should have a straight line that looks something roughly like so. Okay, so that was the easy part. But how do we go climb up the ladder? That's trickier, isn't it? Here's the way I'm going to do it. Why are these two lines important to me? These two vertical lines. Hopefully you've worked this out by now, yeah. yeah, that, um, like... yeah. Good, where the gradient is zero, here and here, two spots, I should expect to get two stationary points up above. Does that make sense? Okay. And what does a stationary point look like? Well, if you have a look at this graph here, a stationary point is kind of like this flat part here. Do you agree? In fact, if I zoomed in far enough, that spot there would just look like a horizontal line, just for a teeny little instant in time. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, down in this guy here, I'm going to, for example, draw a horizontal line, like so. Okay, I don't know what's happening on the left or the right, but I know around there, there's a stationary point. So that's why it looks kind of flat. Okay. Now then my next question is, do I go up after the stationary point or do I go down? I'm, I'm flat and then I'm going to go one way or the other. Which way? Am I going to go up or am I going to go down? Have a think about it. What information does the graph tell me after this stationary point? What does this gradient here tell me? Can you tell me about the sign, the positive negative of the gradient at that point? What's this? This is positive, right? If a gradient is positive, what does that tell you about the original graph? Gradient's positive. That means that you should be going up, right? That's an increasing function. So in other words, after this stationary point here, this one here, the next thing I should do is go up. 
Okay, in fact, that means I'm gonna start a little bit lower, like down here, and I'm gonna start going up, like so. And does that make sense? I've started low and I'm going high, okay? I'm heading towards this um, other vertical line here. What happens at that vertical line? What was, why was it important to me? There's, a, there's another stationary point that I'm heading towards, right? So as I head up, you better slow down if you wanna to get to that stationary point, because otherwise you're gonna hit the wall, right? So I slow down until I get to that stationary point. You see how I worked out what was going on between these two? Number one, I knew there were two stationary points. Number two, I knew that between them, I was going up because my gradient was positive. Hopefully now you can fill in the rest of the gaps. How do I know that this is the shape on this side? What information in this graph here, the gradient, tells me that? Yeah, go ahead. Fantastic. So we don't have the algebra here, but that doesn't mean you can't use all your algebraic intuition. So you're like, I started with a parabola, I think this thing's going to be a cubic. But another part of the graph told you to confirm that, right? Have a look down here. Look at this section of the gradient. This section here, let me shade it in a color to make it really obvious. What's the sign of the gradient in this section? It's negative, right? Which should tell you what about the original function. It's going down, it's decreasing. You see that? Do you see how it's decreasing? And you see the same thing over here on this side. That guy's also decreasing. So that's why I know this should be the rest of the shape. Okay, so well done if you got something roughly like that. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah? Okay, just one last thing. Um, you might notice where I've drawn my graph. Do you think it would make a difference if I drew the graph up here? Would it make a difference if it was higher or lower? Some of you are shaking your head. Why? Because it's only graphing the gradient and the gradient's the same. I'm only graphing the gradient. The gradient is the same between this graph I just showed you and this graph, which is way lower. The position doesn't change. It's the steepness, the gradient that matters. Okay? That will come really important in a few months, so file it in the back of your mind. All right.